What's up, everyone? Aaron Nagler here for PackersNews.com, live on Facebook late Thursday afternoon, heading into the evening. Thought I'd jump on in lieu of any real kind of breaking news and see what's up, see what's on your minds, see what you want to talk about in relation to the Green Bay Packers, the team you all spend so much time worrying about. And uh, obviously, so do I. 24-7, 365, that's why I'm here, chat some Packers with you. Jay, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Kyle Kuzno is here, the mayor is in the house, ladies and gentlemen, so watch yourselves. Because you never know what City Hall might have to say. Uh, can we talk about beer today? I don't know about that, Corey. Usually I like to save my beer talk for after the camera stops rolling. Howdy from Dallas. What's up, David? Jennifer? Hey, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Kyle? Always good to see you, buddy. Don't be a stranger, man. What scheme does Pet and Run? That's a good question, Alex. Um... It's funny, he comes from the Rex Ryan tree, uh, runs basically the scheme that Rex Ryan ran. I would posit he probably does a better job running it than at least Rex Ryan did towards the end of his career. Um, it is based in 3-4 principles. In Buffalo, funnily enough, he kind of used a 4-3 under front, which meant he used four down linemen a lot of the time. Um, I think part of that was due to personnel because he had Mario Williams at end. But, um, you know... Obviously, we're going to have to wait to see how the roster takes shape before I think Petten even begins to kind of mold what his scheme is to the personnel at hand in Green Bay. But I tell you what, I do think um, this has a chance to be very, you know, a quick turnaround in Green Bay if Petten can get one or two key components. Um, but again, it's very early and we have to see how this roster shakes uh, shapes up over the course of this offseason. Move Clay inside. People keep saying it. I keep agreeing. I think it makes a lot of sense. We'll see. I think one of the big reasons they're unable to kind of kick him in, inside full-time last year is because they didn't have much behind him. It's all well and good when you say kick Clay inside, but kicking Clay inside in 2017 meant playing Kyler Fackrell, which nobody wanted to see. You're at work watching, Dean. I hope uh, I look informative, and um, clearly the fourth quarter reports are um, very uh, promising and uh, we expect to yield returns on uh, all the investments. There, that was for the benefit of your boss who's watching over your shoulder, undoubtedly. House was a big disappointment, yet you never seem to see that. Why? Oh, if you mean, like, see it in the media? I don't know. I think, I don't know, I've talked about it a couple times. I think I actually talked about it yesterday. I think for what they got out of him, I mean, they got what they expected from a Devon House signing. They got him for a little over $2 million a year, for the one year. Um, you know, he was hurt. Some of the time, and he was up and down when he was on the field. You're going to get inconsistent play, and that's what you got. Um, I don't think anybody expected him to come in and be Darrell Rivas in his prime. Um, so maybe that's why. I mean, I, I don't, you know, even the word disappointment. I don't think it's that big a disappointment when you kind of got what you expected when you signed him. Now, if they had signed him to a big money deal, if they had signed him to say, you know, uh, what the Jaguars or the Patriots laid out for their corners in free agency, then, yeah, I think you could talk about it being a disappointment. But when you sign the guy for one year for very little money and you get what you got out of him this year, I don't think you can call that a disappointment. I think that's kind of your expected ROI. Can Josh Jones be a Deion Jones type of player with a new defensive coordinator? Yeah, I think that's a decent idea. Um, the, he is definitely better the closer to the line of scrimmage he gets. He seemed really lost in space uh, throughout the second half of the season. Now, you know, the question obviously is how much of that was him being thrown out there in a position he wasn't comfortable in and how much of it was scheme-based, you know? I think he's got the tools to be a very good player in the NFL. I think a big part of the equation there is, you know, finding the right fit and usage. And I think they had really good ideas about using him early on in the year. You remember the Bengals game, probably the highlight of his rookie season, you know, he looked lights out. And most of his, big, in fact, I think all of his big plays happened either at or behind the line of scrimmage. You know, you fast forward to the second half of the year, injuries have really taken their toll between Morgan Burnett going out and you have uh, Kentrell Bryce out for most of the season. Uh, you know, Josh Jones was asked to play a lot of safety uh, way back, a free safety almost, because they had uh, ha ha Clinton Dix doing a lot of stuff going up and down. So, yeah, I thought Josh Jones, you know, he was he was probably inconsistent, but you expected that from a rookie. And uh, I think yeah, if you put him down in the box a little bit more, use him as almost you as you would a traditional linebacker in a nickel spot, 
I think he could get some really good returns. But a lot of that is going to be determined by what happens in free agency and the draft. But, you know, early on, looking at the fit, yeah, I think that's a good idea. In your opinion, what's next for Dom? Ooh, good question, Nick. Um, I tend to think there's a good chance he's not in coaching next year. Um, I know he hasn't interviewed for, I haven't seen it reported anyway, that he hasn't interviewed for any spots on any staffs yet with all the openings out there still. Now, that said, there's, you know, a bunch of teams still have yet to make a head coaching hire, so maybe he catches on on somebody's staff, maybe comes in as a consultant, what have you, much like Petten did last year in, in Seattle. But my hunch is that, you know, this guy's been doing it a long time. Uh, maybe he takes a break, and maybe that becomes a permanent break, and then he ends up retiring. But, um, yeah, I can't imagine someone's going to bring him in as a defensive coordinator, given how poor his defense has looked the last few years. Buddy, need a background. Ernst, you don't like the pictures of my daughter and my closet and my lamp? Come on, dude. Who cares about the background as long as you're getting the hot fire content? I don't know. I just made that up. Make Capers gun play corner. Oof, Matt, that's rough. Jimmy Graham, a priority signing in the offseason. Marcus, I will just direct you to my Facebook Live from yesterday. Uh, I talked extensively about Graham. A, I don't even know if he hits free agency, but B, even if he does, I got to think someone's going to pay him top dollar. And I can't imagine the Packers doing that, especially if they have 10 million plus invested in their top three wide receivers. But you never know. We'll see. When is Hundley going to be released? Asked Sean. Not if Hundley's going to be released, but when. Um, I don't know, man. I'll tell you, he's set to make like $700,000 next year, which is dirt cheap. Uh, last year was rookie deal. You know, he knows the system and, you know, yes, he's inconsistent to poor at times, but you know, you can get through a game with him. You know, he knows the system. He's a camp arm. I think they bring him back and they probably give him some competition, but I tend to think he'll be on the roster next year. Now, maybe he gets to camp and you know, a draft pick and or free agent totally outplays him, and then they cut him. That's a possibility, but I do think they'll bring him to camp. Ooh, Marcus Davenport or Josh Jackson at 14? That's a good question. Um, for my money, I'd probably say Davenport, but I, you know, don't. I think both of those guys are worthy of the pick at 14, definitely. Any chance we sign Ryan Fitzpatrick? I think we should. I thought they should have last offseason, but... You know, that, that's the type of signing that they probably would have to make if they wanted to bring in competition. Because uh, most free agent, um, you know, backups probably aren't going to want to sit behind Aaron Rodgers if they have a decent amount of time left in them uh, career-wise. But Fitzpatrick's at, nearing the end and could latch on and hope for, you know, the Packers to turn around and become a contender behind Aaron. Yeah, I could see it. Cheap doesn't mean good. No, that's absolutely right. So the new... The new reporting on McCarthy is that he's untouchable. He's an average to below average coach. I disagree on that. So do a lot of people around the NFL, but you're allowed your opinion. Uh, I know Bill Belichick thinks the world of him, and uh, that's a pretty good endorsement. Any decent tight ends that might hit the market? Um, it's really hard to say before we get to uh, you know the time, I think it's next month, where they have to start applying the franchise and transition tags. Check back once the tag period has started. Uh, we get a little closer to free agency, and then we'll have a better idea. Is the best defensive player for the Packers next year currently on the roster? Oof, I don't know. I forgot my crystal ball at home. Uh, I'll say yes, though. Do you think Danica Patrick will be a distraction for Rodgers like Munn was? Hmm, you mean like when Aaron Rodgers won his MVP while he was with Munn? In his own words, he's a highly successful NFL college? I don't know, I don't know what that means. I think he meant to say coach. I think Hundley will be traded. I guess that's a possibility, but if you're another team, are you watching that tape from last year and offering a draft pick? I find it hard to believe, but you never know. Uh, can Packers sign Raji before free agency? Thank you, Pat. Excellent. Can Martinez get better, or has he already hit his ceiling? I think he absolutely can get better, um, and he absolutely has room to grow. Um, Obviously, a lot of production there this year. I think he took a big jump between year one and year two, and that is traditionally when you like to see those guys, and guys do make the jump between year one and year two. But absolutely, there's more room for him to grow, and I think he can reach it. Um, now, do I ever do I think he's ever going to be like you know the second coming of Luke Keekley? No, but 
uh, there's definitely room for improvement. And, you know, whether he reaches that uh, possible improvement, that's entirely up to him. And a lot of it's going to be down to how he's used and his fit within this new scheme. Too early to call Beagle a bust? Way too early, Josh. Way too early. you got to remember, he missed the entire offseason. He literally was hurt in his very first practice uh, at rookie camp and then missed the entire offseason and then missed all of training camp and then missed the first six, actually eight weeks after he finally got activated of the season. So essentially he had like two practices before he finally saw the field. And then, even then, he was practicing in pads once a week, barely, for the remainder of the season. Uh, the kid, you got, you got, you can't make any kind of determination on who or what Vince Beagle is going to be off of this year. Um, it's basically a redshirt year. So, you know, see how he attacks the offseason, see how uh, the summer goes in training camp, and how he hits the ground running in preseason and the start of next year, and then we can start to make an evaluation. But right now, you've, you've no idea what he is. There's, there's nothing there's nothing to even I mean there's nothing to analyze. You essentially saw his first like, you know, baby steps in the NFL towards the end of last year. Do you see Mike Penton using a lot more four three? Aaron, it's possible. I know there's a lot of people um both around the team and a couple people within the team who think they have the personnel to run kind of more four man front stuff, but um, you know, it's always well and good before you, you know, start it. I mean, I remember that was all the talk a couple of years ago. They were going to use more four-man fronts under capers, and then they walked into Seattle and tried it and got absolutely steamrolled. And then that got junked, and they never used it again. Um, but I do think Patton's a little more steeped in it than capers was. So uh, I think the possibility is there. But again, it's going to largely depend on what happens as far as how Gutekunz shapes his first roster. Um, we'll see. Does Patton already know the scheme he will implement, or will it change with the draft and free agency? I think he's undoubtedly has a base to work off of, but you know what he's going to end up teaching people and uh, what he's going to implement game plan wise from week to week. That will certainly depend on what happens, you know, between now and say late April. Is Campen returning? Uh, yes, Matt. Uh, we don't know officially under you know what guys. I know he was. Uh, talked about for offensive coordinator before they brought Joe Philbin back. I don't know if he even ever had that interview, but they've been really cagey. I've been trying to get someone to say something about what exactly Joe Philbin's title is, and I know the reports out there are that he's going to be an offense, the offensive coordinator, but I haven't been able to get anyone to confirm that. So it's, I mean, it's entirely possible Campen's the offensive coordinator and Philbin's coming back to be line coach. I mean, I don't think that's going to happen, but it's it's a possibility uh, until we get official word from the Packers or until we get someone to confirm it. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yes, Campen is still on the staff. Do you think they'll bring, bring back Tremont Williams? No. Why isn't the new defensive coordinator hiring his own guys? Well, you can't really say he is or he isn't at this point because we're not really privy to the hiring process. I know McCarthy's been bringing guys in for interviews, um, a couple of which he has a history with. But you have to think some of that's being done in concert with Patton, and they're undoubtedly reaching out to people. Um, maybe that just hasn't been reported yet. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how many of these guys end up being Patton's guys. Um, I do think he needs to bring at least one other guy in there to help him teach the scheme. Um, and if not a coach, then a veteran player. But we'll see. Any word on Darren Perry? No, Stacy. Nothing yet outside of what Tom Silverstein reported two days ago in regards to his interview down in Houston to be secondary's coach down there. He is still under contract in Green Bay, so he could be back next year as either safeties and or secondary coach in Green Bay. We'll see. Do you think the Packers are going to draft or bring in some safety help? That's a good, that's a good question, Troy. It's funny how quick things can change in the NFL. Towards the end of camp last year, I remember sitting around with my colleagues and talking about the depth at the safety position and how stocked it appeared to be. Uh, all the way from, you know, Ha Ha Clinton Dix coming off his Pro Bowl season all the way down to Marwin Evans. They all looked good and serviceable and, uh, you know, able to kind of be malleable within the scheme. And you thought, okay, here we go. And then throughout the season, that that just kind of fell apart, both due to injury and ineffectiveness. So I do think they're going to have to look to upgrade some there. Now, I don't know if they're going to spend big money, but I do think they need to find uh, 
something, if it's not more, bringing Morgan Burnett back, which is a possibility, uh, but he is set to be a free agent, I do think they have to kind of maybe attack it in both, both areas, both free agency and probably later on in the draft. Does Rollins have the raw talent to turn it around? Mm, good question, Joe. I think he has the athletic ability. I don't know if the tools are going to be there after the injury. Achilles are notoriously difficult to come back from. Um, and the guy wasn't the fastest you know, player to begin with. If he robs him of what little speed he had, that could be an issue. So uh, he's got a ro long road back. Um, I, mean, I would never bet against any NFL player just because these guys do amazing things year in and year out when it comes to rehab and uh, getting back on, on the field. But that's a tough one. That's a very tough one. Vikings lose on a last second field goal. The curse continues. We'll see, Steve. We'll see. I'm, I'm picking the Eagles. Um, I don't even know how it's going to unfold. It maybe <laughs> happens like that, but yeah, I, I, I like the Eagles in that game. Has Randall gotten a new deal? Wasn't he in his final year? Maybe not. If you talk, Jerry, if you're talking about Randall Cobb, I believe he has another year on, on after this. Or maybe 2018 is his last year. I can't remember for sure off the top of my head. You think while they'll start signing free agents? Um, yeah, I think they'll sign a few more than you're used to, but heck, that's not very difficult. Um, although, you know, we say that, but the Packers, you know, they signed some free agents last year. Um, but I do think that you'll see a little bit more activity, both when it comes to the free agent market and uh, pulling the trigger on a few trades. Who has the better pass rush, Eagles or Vikings? Ooh, Brandon. That's a tough one. I'd probably say the Eagles. If it's third and ten and I need to pin my ears back and get to the quarterback, I'd probably say the Eagles, but only slightly. What's your picks for this weekend? Uh, it's the Eagles and the Patriots, which I know is pro probably pretty boring. I think the Jaguars have a real good shot. I think they match up really well with the Patriots, but we'll see. Um, Demarius Randall. Oh, if you mean uh, Demarius Randall's deal? Well, he's on his, still on his rookie deal, so he hasn't got an extension. So this will be, what is it, 15, 18. So he's got two years left. Uh, will we consider drafting Darwin James? Yeah, I think so, Caitlin. Um, you know, it's early yet. Uh, we'll see how the draft process shakes out, but I don't see why not. This is Josh Jones, the future linebacker. Christopher, I talked about him at the beginning of the video. When I'm done, feel free to go back and take a look, but... Uh, I think there's a chance they use him in kind of the Deion Jones, maybe Deion Buchanan mold, much as those teams have in the NFC South. Come back and double dip in the first round. Nate, I think it's a possibility, especially given the fact that they're kind of re, you know, kind of overhauling their scheme, obviously, on defense. That's what they did the last time. They had a scheme switch on defense. They took BJ Raji to kind of shore up the middle there, and they switched to the 3 4, and then they jumped back into the first round to get Clay Matthews, and we all know how that turned out. So, it's a possibility, no doubt. Uh, and they've got the ammo. They've got 11 picks, I think it is, um, depending on compensatory picks. And the compensatory selections are now tradable as of last year. So they've got the ammunition if they want to, to kind of move them down the board. What happens with Jordy after his contract is up? I'll think he'll retire. Uh, he's indicated as much, I believe, uh, a couple of times when asked about it. Uh, he, you know, he, these guys are all the same. They, you know, they don't want to talk about it, etc. But Jordy has said, you know, kind of point blank that you know, he's gonna, he wants to play out his deal and then, con and then retire. Uh, but we'll see. You yeah. <laughs> know, anybody in Green Bay knows these guys can change their mind, especially a one Mr. Favre. Uh, do you think Clay Matthews is better in the middle? Yes, Bob, I do. Uh, I think a big part of it, though, is finding people who can play the edge. In, in his absence, because that was a big part of why they couldn't move him permanently last year. <laughs> Any chance Jordy puts on 30 pounds and plays tight end? No. Trade up draft Baker Mayfield for insurance? Um, that would be bold. That would certainly put uh, John, uh, I'm sorry, Brian Gutekunst, uh, a kind of stamp on the team, no doubt. Do I think that's going to happen? No. Does the draft come before free agency? No. Free agency comes well before the draft, Caitlin. Uh, free agency will begin in about a month, and, and then uh, uh, the draft is in late April. How rich would 
would be if you got paid every time someone spelled Rogers wrong in the chats. I don't know, man. I spell it wrong on the fly on Twitter when I'm walking down the street all the time, so I can't talk. Uh, maybe if I paid myself, I'd be... There you go. JT Barrett is the backup QB. I don't know, Giff, but I'll tell you this. Uh, they were uh, seen talking to him at the East-West Shrine game yesterday. So, uh, there's possible interest there. Um, now, do they want him to be a quarterback? Do they want him to switch positions? That I can't say, but it's a possibility, I guess. Uh, what news do you expect to tell us to? I don't know, Juan. Uh, I just come here to chat some Packers with you. Sign Sammy Watkins. Adam, uh, he would be an excellent addition. Uh, you'd cost a lot of money, though, in free agency. And considering what they're paying everyone already at that position, I can't imagine they're going to shell out big money in free agency for one. But uh, that's, you know, even allowing for Sammy Watkins to get to free agency, which there's no guarantee he will. The Rams could very easily keep him around. Crystal Ball is 42 coming back. Great question, Matt. I'm going to say no, because he's, he would be on his third contract unless he takes a very team-friendly deal. Um, injuries have started to kind of rob him of uh, things that have you know, made him valuable throughout the years. His availability has, has gone down throughout the last two seasons. So I would tend to say no, but you never really know contract-wise what these guys talk about behind closed doors. Um, you know, it seems like he would be a good asset to have around transitioning to Mike Pettin's defense, but seeing as he's never played in it, I don't know if they can really count on him to help teach the young guys since he'll be learning it as he goes as well. Do you think Landry will get Devontae Adams-type money? No, I, I saw that headline this morning saying that Landry saying he wanted a Devontae Adams-type deal. You know, do I think he'll get it? I don't know. There's a possibility. I have no doubt about it. I mean, free agency happens. You, you see it every year. Guy, you know, Teams throw money at, at guys that you kind of scratch your head. I probably wouldn't do it, but you know I'm sure there's a team out there that probably will. Um, and the way the agent will probably frame it is like, look, Devontae Adams got all this money. He's playing with you know Aaron Rodgers, even though you know Devontae Adams clearly you know produced while Hundley was in there as well. But uh, you know Land the, the argument for Landry will be, well, he's got Ryan Tannehill and and Matt Moore throwing him balls, and those guys are terrible. Nah, I'm not saying I just definitely agree that. Landry's worth that, but I'm sure that's how they'll frame it. What positions do we need to make us the biggest force in the NFL? The biggest force in the NFL? Devin, that's a good question. I would say they need a pass rusher more than anything on earth. Um, probably another corner. Uh, and then a right tackle. Uh, to, at least to start the season. Because there's no way Brian Balaga is going to be ready to start next year. And Jason Spriggs was hurt at the end of the season in the second to last game. Both those guys probably don't will probably start the year on PUP if both are back. So they need someone to play right tackle. I don't see a solution on the roster as it is. Is Aaron Rodgers 100%? Will he ever be again? Shane, that's a fatalistic question. Um, yeah, you could see that he wasn't quite 100% when he came back in that Panthers game, under threw a couple of balls that he normally hits. Uh, but that was always the kind of concern with him coming back so early. Uh, to an injury to his shoulder on his throwing arm, that the strength wouldn't be there, and it clearly wasn't. I think given an offseason, full rehab, etc., he'll come back right as rain. Now, it'll be something to monitor, definitely, uh, throughout the summer, and especially once camp starts, but you know, all indications from every medical ex expert we've talked to and every kind of you know, NFL person who's kind of gone through this and looked at it, he should be fine. Uh, he should be... As far as his arm goes and his arm strength, he should be 100%. Now, the real question is, when do his legs go? You know, a lot of his game is escaping the pocket. Um, and you've started to see him. He's a little slower now than he used to be, but he still does great work in the pocket, uh, anticipating, breaking free. And a lot of that is just feel. And that's not a question of speed um, or even explosiveness. That's just, you know, how good he is at sensing pressure. Um, but once his legs start to give way, then that's when you start to wonder if the downslide is imminent. But right now, I don't see any signs of that. How much cap room does the Packers have? DeMario, the last I saw, well, it's really fluid. Um, after the two deals to um, Lindsley and Adams, I think they were hovering around, I want to say $32 million, roughly. Um, which you think, oh, that's a pretty decent amount, until you realize like the Jaguars, I think, have like $100 million heading into next year or something ridiculous number. Teams have just gone stupid with the amount of cap space they have. 
Hundley equals do not want. Oh, KM, that's kind of rough. Retaining Lindsley, huge, no more messing around in the center position. Matt, I agree. Obviously, they had um, kind of a <laughs> revolving door there at the position for a long time. Um, and then even when Lindsley went down, they were luckily, lucky enough to have Treader able to step in. Uh, but with Treader gone, you know, Lindsley stepped up. And he appeared on the injury report, I think, twice this year, uh, the week leading up to games. But missed, played every game, played every snap. The only guy along the offensive line to do so in 2017. Pretty pretty amazing testament to him. Brady never had legs. It's true, Matthew, but he didn't play Rogers' game. Rogers seems to always come up big. Doesn't that make him a keeper, tight end? Um, I think he's a keeper. Um, you do wonder about the injury there at the end of the year, if the, how that will affect negotiations. But I tend to think they'd want to bring him back just because he knows the offense, really sure hands. Uh, like you say, assignment sure. Um, maybe it's the case if they let him hit free agency and tell him, look, go see what you can get. And if you don't like what you see, which is a good possibility, you're welcome back with us at our number. And I think, you know, the Packers have done that a number of times throughout the year, years, and I think that's a good bet for Richard Rodgers. How can a team have $100 million in cap space? Man, Jason, I don't know. It's, it's ridiculous. Brady sitting up practice gamesmanship? I don't know, man. I, 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 you know, he's on, the, he's on the injury report. You hurt his hand, so we'll see. Do you think Pipkins can step step up next year? You know, I liked his game from the moment I saw him in the spring. Uh, you can there's a couple tweets from me this this past spring during uh, uh, OTAs mini camp. I really liked uh, his aggressiveness. He showed really good coverage skills. He was really up and down when, once he saw the field. Ironically enough, both times against Minnesota, and then he got in the Detroit game as well there in week 17, but. Um, there's something to work with there. I think he'd be a great long-term depth player. I don't know if I ever see, I don't see a long-term starter, but then again, you never know with these guys, you know, again, you can make that year one to year two jump and really come out and surprise some people at the beginning of next year. I'm cautiously optimistic about him, but I can't imagine they're going to go into 2018 thinking he's an answer at the position. I think he's a, a good developmental prospect, but that's probably where it stops. Um, let's see. Should we try to get Vontae Davis? I don't know, Josh. He, I can't remember what the injury was, but I remember he had a pretty serious injury um, yeah, there at the end of the year. So uh, we'll see. I, I tend to doubt it, but you never know. More passes to the flat to Richard Rodgers. Yeah, Kyle, nobody wants to see that. Packers need a Deion Sanders-type cornerback. Yeah, every team in the NFL wants a Deion Sanders-type corner, cornerback. Good luck. Hasn't been one since Deion Sanders. Darrell Rivas is probably the closest thing, and he wasn't even as good as Deion. Come on. Uh, all defense draft? Eh, David, I know that's that's a uh, it's something that you know is tempting, um, but you're always getting better, you're always getting worse, and you have to tend to both sides of the line. You have to tend to both sides of the, of the field. You can't put all your eggs in the we got to draft all defense and then let your offense just kind of get stale for a full season. You know, i got to be bringing in talent on both sides of the ball every single year. So you're always moving forward. You're always moving back. Let's see. I'll take one or two more here, guys. Any chance of signing Lawrence? Mike, maybe. Again, that's a guy that I think there's a really good chance the Cowboys bring him, bring him back, uh, either on a you know, re-signing or an extension. But we'll see. What do you think about Kuiper's pick at defensive end today? Don, I, I think, wasn't it, it was Davenport, right? Or somebody had Davenport, one of their mocks today. Um, or was it Jack? I can't remember. All these mocks kind of flow together after a while. I like the Davenport pick. I, I like that one. This is the second time I've been asked if we're bringing Tremont Molina's back. He's going to be the new Raji. No, they're not bringing Tremont Molina's back. I love Tremont. Loved his game. Uh, and he actually still looked like he had something left there in Arizona this year, but no. They're not bringing Tremont back. ESPN said we have the slowest receivers in the league. Do you agree? Travis, I wrote a post about uh, actually a study that was uh, highlighted in the New York Times where they used chip technology to prove the Packers have the slowest wide receivers in the league. So I don't know if it's a question of agreeing or not. Science says they do. Who's our best receiver at running back? Probably Ty Montgomery. But um, 
I think they've all shown that they can do it. And I think Aaron Jones is probably the best in space with the ball in his hand. But they've all got receiving ability. Uh, Packers need to suffer for a few years. Aaron will get hurt again. Skull. <laughs> What's up, Junior? Good luck this Sunday. Uh, we have the fastest wide receiver on the bench. Yeah, but they can't play wide receiver. Everyone always says that. When, the, when people talk about like this lack of speed at wide receiver, they're like, well, Janice and Davis have speed. Yeah, but neither one of them can play wide receiver. So what good does that do you? All right, everyone. I'm going to head. Thanks so much for jumping on. Sorry if I didn't get to your question. They go by rather fast. But uh, make sure you're checking PackersNews.com for all the latest. Each and every day, we've got everything around the Packers. Anything you want to know about the offseason, anything that's going on with the green and gold, we've got it for you. Thanks a lot, everyone. Make sure you check out my podcast. It just dropped this afternoon. Tons of talk with my friend Pete, my friend and colleague Pete Doherty, uh, about the quandary regarding Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb and their contracts and what to do going forward. Um, make sure you check that out and everything else at PackersNews.com. Thanks a lot, everyone. Have a good night.